Hi, my name is Jennifer Saruda, and I'm an assistant professor and apiculture specialist in the Department of Entomology and Plant Pathology. This talk's going to be a brief dive into the hive, meaning we're going to do a quick inspection of a beehive just to show you what it's about, but we're also going to talk about the biology of the bees and a little bit about the importance of beekeeping in general. So first we're going to start out by talking about migratory beekeeping. Many people don't realize that honeybees are moved all across the United States for the pollination of specific crops. So here's a map of migratory beekeeping across the United States, and you'll see that there are different crops grown in different states, and some crops are only grown in one state. Oftentimes we're moving bees around for these pollination services because there aren't enough natural pollinators in the area um, to provide the services needed for these large areas of crops that are being grown. While honeybees are not native to the United States, they make a great pollinator for many reasons. One of which is that we can move them around the United States. We can close up their hives and put them on trucks and move them around where additional pollination services are needed. Another thing that makes them great is that they are generalists. So they aren't specific to any type of plant. They will oftentimes visit many of these different crop systems. I also wanna point out that Many of the food crops that we grow in the United States are not native to North America either. This is a map from a recent study showing the origin of food crops across the globe. And so what you see is that we have a lot of diversity in crops from around the world. And many of those we actually do grow now in the United States. And that's another reason why honeybees and diverse pollinators are so important for having successful crops grown in the United States. Okay, so now we're going to take a quick dive into the hive. We're going to do a quick inspection of the small nucleus colony on the right hand side. First things first is we want to make sure that we smoke the colony's entrance to calm down any of the guard bees because we are breaking into their home and we want to make sure that their alarm pheromone doesn't get spread throughout the colony and make all the bees on edge. So we're going to take off this lid in just a second and one thing I'll note is that this time of year, and especially with all the recent rain, um, I've been having a lot of small hive beetles in the colonies, and so that's what I'm going to be smashing right now. Um, they are a pest of the colony, and they can feed on hive products as well as um, eggs and developing bees. I'm going to pull out this first frame. The frames towards the edges tend to be honey, whereas the frames towards the center tend to be developing bees. So we're going to pull out this frame and we're going to bring it closer in just a second. Just want to make sure the queen's not on this frame before I move it around. So here you can see all this capped honey on there. And later on, I'll go ahead and I'll pull off all those cappings and spin out that honey and jar it. Set that one aside and go on to the next frame. And these little pieces of um, tissue fabric up on top, um, they serve to trap some of those small hive beetles as well. So we're going to pull out this frame and it should have more brood on it, developing bees. So bees have a life cycle just like butterflies where they go from egg to larva to pupa to adult. And the brown capped cells, those are the pupal stages. And then we're going to flip to the other side and hopefully you'll see in some of the cells some white grubs. And those white grubs are actually the larvae. And some of those other open cells have eggs, which you can't see because they're at the very bottom of the cell. But this Queen has been good in terms of laying productively, increasing numbers in this colony. So we're going to go on to the next frame, see what we see here, carefully looking to make sure the queen's not on it. And here you can see there's a lot of that capped brood on this frame. So we're going to have a lot of new adult bees coming out soon. Then we're going to speed up and go through this colony just to check and see, make sure we don't have any signs of disease, but also checking to make sure that the queen is doing well and that there are, there's adequate food resources for the bees. So I'm just going through these quickly because I haven't found anything new or exciting to show you. So nothing new upstairs. I'm going to put this back together, take off that top box, and then we're going to go downstairs to look for the queen. So one thing I'll point out, I'm going to pause for a second and just tell you that drones are male honeybees and they can't sting and they're only really around for reproduction. Um, and when they reproduce, they die. So when we see males in this colony, they haven't mated yet. And this time of year, there aren't really any new queens for him to mate with. So the worker bees, which are all female and do all of the work for the colony, um, they don't really want to take care of him through the winter. So they're starting to kick those male bees out of the colony this time of year. You can see he's larger than the worker bees. He also can't sting. 
So whenever you see a, a honeybee out on the flower, it's always a female bee that's out there doing all the, the work in the colony. And I'm gonna show you a frame in just a second where it has some interesting behavior. So we're gonna see a bee doing the waggle dance. So let's see if we can bring my cursor up and see this bee right here doing, shaking her abdomen as she's walking in a figure eight. And so she's telling the other bees where to go find this food resource that she collected. So she's telling them where to go relative to where the sun is and relative to where the, the colony is, and also telling them how far to go to find this food resource. It's called the dance language of the honeybee. They're very, very sophisticated. So we're gonna pull up the next frame, and this one has the queen, and hopefully you'll see her as I walk slowly closer to you. She has a green mark on her thorax. And so we put those marks on the queen, so we have a five-year color rotation that we use to mark queens, and this helps us keep track of how old they are. Green is from last year, so this is actually a slightly older queen. All the queens this year would be marked blue. So as I mentioned before, that queen bee is the mother of all of the bees in this colony. So she lays all of the eggs, and then her daughters, these worker bees, actually help raise their little sisters and their little brothers. And after that, they will then age out and start becoming foragers. But really the, the queen's job is to lay the eggs and the workers help their mom in terms of raising their little sisters. So it's a really interesting family system. So we've gone over the importance of honeybee pollination services and we've taken a quick look into the hive. But now I just wanna talk about a few examples of some of the other products that we can make from the hive. So honeybees obviously produce honey, which can be used in many different ways, including cooking, medicinal wound dressings, and also um, in a fermented honey wine. But we can also collect pollen from the colonies, and some people will consume um, small quantities of pollen to help with their seasonal allergies. And we can also collect wax from the colonies, and this can be used in many different ways, including candles, soaps, lotion, different types of cosmetics, if we are successful in keeping this colony alive and healthy. And so that's where we're basically gonna leave things is talking about how important it is to support pollinators, including honeybees, because all of these benefits from pollinators depend on keeping a strong and healthy population. And specifically with honeybees, we have a lot of challenges and diseases, which we did not get into today at all, um, that are really challenging our, our industry right now. And so we really want to encourage everyone to try to plant as much pollinator habitat because it can benefit honeybees and other pollinators in so many ways. And if you are interested in learning more about beekeeping, I'd encourage you to check out my website so that you can find some resources and educational opportunities that um, myself and my program are offering. Um, one thing I'll point out too is that we have extension offices all across the state with really great agents who can answer your questions about pollinators and anything else related to agriculture. And thank you so much for all of your time and your support. And I really look forward to meeting you in person at one of our field days in the future.